Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Last time, we put the finishing touches on our interaction system, and all that's left is to test it. That's what we're going to do in this video. Let's make some interactions happen. So our first goal is very simple. It's just confirm it's working. And the way we're going to do that is with a very very basic interaction. We're going to create an interaction between the monkey and all these cubes, and the interaction is simply going to be if the cube intersects the monkey, or more specifically the AABB of the monkey, then print some message to the screen. Simple as that. We're just going to print a message if they intersect. And that's what we're going to do. So how do we do this? First off, we're going to want to make some slight changes to game. So in game.hpp, that's where I am right now, I'm going to include interactionworld.hpp. And we're going to add that as a class variable for the game world. So I'm going to create interaction world, interaction world. There you go. We're going to add on to the constructor interaction world, and we're actually here. We're going to pass in ECS because the interaction world needs to know about the ECS to be created. If you remember from our constructor, I'll just... Oh, here it is, yeah. See, it takes in the ECS. But we also need one more small thing here, and that is this. Right here, what we need to do is we need to make sure the ECS has the interaction world as a listener. So I should be able to do ECS add listener interaction world. And I'm pretty sure this takes by pointer, so we should pass in the address. And with that in place, we should be able to build and run and not see much of a difference. Yeah. But the important point here is now we have the interaction world initialized and we can do something with it. So, now that we've created the interaction world, now we can use it. And the first step to using it is make sure it's actually processing at some point, because that's the big method. If I remember from interaction world, the big method here, process interactions. We have to actually call that at some point. And of course, the most logical place to call that is the game loop. So what I'm going to do is, for now, I'm going to call this after we update systems. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say interaction world dot process interactions. I'm just going to pass in frame time. There's other ways you could do this. You could have interaction worlds running on a different timer than your system update timer. But this is a good place to start. So that's what I'm going to do. And now that we have that, all we have to do is create an interaction. And this is going to work actually a lot like our game component system, well, systems. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to borrow from here. I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go to our game CS. I'm just going to show. I'll look at one of the util components. It doesn't all okay, right? They don't have the system. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just pick something. Movement control. Sure. I'm just going to copy one of these systems as a base because our interactions are going to look an awful lot like this. So I'm just going to copy and paste. But we're not going to make a system. We're going to make an interaction. So it's going to inherit from public interaction which doesn't have a constructor, so we can just do that. And beyond that, I'm going to borrow this add interactor component type and add interact e component type. But not yet. So at some point, we're going to do add interactor component types something and add interact e component type something. But again, I'm not really too worried about that yet. The big thing I want to implement is the interact method. So it's going to be called interact, going to take in Right, let's just copy the signature. It doesn't. There's no reason I need to baby it. There we go. Oh right, wrong file. <laughs> yeah, just right here. Just paste in like that, and we could do some sort of logic. Right now, our logic is going to be really straightforward. Which is going to be debug log temp two, and I'll just say interacting. Sure. And this should build and run. We shouldn't have any issues with this. I Ah, because I I forgot to name it properly. I want to name this test interaction, because that's all it is. We're not going to be doing anything fancy with it. 
Also, I want to comment these out because I don't have anything yet. Also, I don't need all this. This is literally all it's going to be. So maybe I didn't need to do as much copy and pasting as I did, but... Oh well, it's the same general thing. So there you go. We notice we build and run, we don't see anything weird yet. Which makes sense because we don't match any interactions. And this is going to be our first test. We're not matching anything right now. So way down here, where we're initializing everything, I'm going to say create interactions. So how does our world interact? Here I'm going to say interaction world, add interaction. And I right, I'm going to create test interaction, test interaction. Don't need any special parameters. Oh, wait, but I don't need that either because it's not a method. I need to pass it in. That's, I'm pretty sure I'm doing that correctly, but I'm going to double check. Yeah, oh, I'm not doing it quite correctly. Haha, -ha, it's a good thing I checked because I need to pass by pointer. So there we go. And now if I build and run, ideally, yeah, look at this. No interaction is actually happening, which is good. There is no, things may be intersecting at various points. But none of them match the component criteria, so no interaction is actually occurring. This is good. This is what we want. So, next up, I want to change our test scene just a little, just to make our initial test a little bit more obvious. What I'm going to do here is going to change how we're creating all the secondary entities. First of all, we're no longer going to use our Megacube component. It was a fun demonstration, but its time has passed, so we're going to... Maybe not get rid of it entirely, but I'm going to go ahead and comment all of it out and return to our old-fashioned separate component ways of representing the cubes. As you see, if we build and run, this gives us the same result, just very minorly less efficient. Which is alright, we don't care about efficiency right now. What we do care about, however, is we care that everything has a collider component. So I'm going to create a collider component called Collider Component. And what we're going to do is we're going to set... So let's create this actually above the Transform Component just to keep everything grouped together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the AABB equals an AABB. And I don't care too, too much about the size. So I'm going to say negative 0 0.1 to 0 0.1. And I'm pretty sure I have a constructor that handles this properly. I'll double check, because you never know, I might be thinking of something else. And good thing I did, because I am thinking of something else. Or more specifically, I'm thinking I forgot that I have to wrap these in a vector for that to work. But other than that, yeah. So from negative 0.1 corner to positive 0.1 corner, it's just a little ABB. And there you go, now we have a collider component. I'm just going to go ahead and add that to our entity. So, in addition to everything we have so far, we're also going to add on a collider component. And this shouldn't change anything. Or maybe it does. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. Interesting. So, turns out, Benny is a nincompoop, because I completely forgot something very critical to this. It's just straight up oversight. And that is, right here, we're always using the default untransformed AABB. So if my transform goes somewhere else, it doesn't matter. It's going to use the default AABB. That's why we had an issue. It would start off in our game. Where is it? Yeah, right here. It would start our game. Every object would have this AABB exactly as it is. It's like... Like, in the game's perspective, it's like if all these AABBs were stacked on top of each other 5,000 times. So, of course, there is an explosion of interacting messages because, well, yeah, that's not supposed to happen. So here's how we're going to fix this. We're going to go to utilcomponents.h. And it's under GameCS, by the way. GameCS to utilcomponents. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second AABB that I'm going to call transformed AABB. All right? So this is what we're going to do. And once we have this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sort of like a cache. So before we sort it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through every single entity that we have. And I'm going to... Not on the same line, on a new line. Thank you. Yeah, basically I'm going to create the transformed version. So I'm going to create a collider component 
glider component equals this. So we get the collider component, and all we want to do here is say collider component transformed AABB is collider component dot AABB dot trans transform because the AABB has a transform method. And here we're going to do something a little different. We're going to get another component, the transform component. And we're going to say the transform component transform dot two matrix. So yeah, we're looking up the transform component of this entity. We're getting the transform object in that transform component, and we're changing it to a matrix. And we're transforming our AABB by that matrix to get the transformed AABB. So this is just a straight up update. And here, later on, rather than using the AABB directly, we're going to use the transformed AABB. Yeah. So all this code gets to stay unchanged. It's just a little extra pre-processing step before we go through everything. There is one more place, though, and that is in our interaction world's compare interaction, or interaction world compare. Yeah, we want the transformed AABB's min extents and transformed AABB. Oh, well, yeah, min extents. Just for the two different ones. So yeah, just switch that around, and that should be, by and large, the big fix for the transformed AABB issue. Also, the collider component here should be a pointer. So yeah, make sure that's a pointer, and make sure you're accessing the transformed AABB and the regular AABB by arrow notation. All right. And it turns out there's one more small issue that's preventing this from working correctly. In our second for loop, the J here, we're starting off at I minus one. That's a typo. It should be I plus one. And this is why it will always intersect with itself, even with the correct AABB. So now we're using the correct AABBs, and we're starting at I plus one, which is what we want, because the whole idea is we look at the list after I. We're looking at everything we haven't tested yet, excluding itself. So with that all out of the way, now we should be able to set up a simple test. So just to make this more consistent, I'm going to comment out the second line of the transform component right here, the transform component, component set translation. We're going to get rid of the random Z component. We're just going to set to 20.0. So it should always be intersectable at, well, somewhere. It should always be intersectable, that's the point. And with all that done, I've set this back to one, so we should be able to build and run. So let's build and run. Let's see what happens. All right, we're building and running. You notice we are not intersecting. If I move all around the cube, we're not intersecting. If I touch it a little bit, we're still not intersecting because the AABB we gave to the monkey is much smaller than the monkey head itself. So I have to really be centered in order to overlap it and have it actually be interacting. So look at this, we're correctly detecting, hey, we're supposed to be interacting. And if I go up, look at that, we're no longer interacting. So look at that, everyone. We have basic interaction. It is actually working. So now that interactions are actually working, wouldn't it be nice if the bounding boxes actually bounded the object? They weren't just arbitrary guesses. So that's what we're going to take on next. And to do this, we're going to need a slight change to our indexed model class, which is from the base code. We have not written this in this series. Though you may have seen something similar if you followed along with, say, the 3D Game Engine series from oh so long ago. But yeah, let's just go in there and rendering to indexed model. And our change here is going to be really simple. We're going to add a new method. It's going to be, it's going to return an AABB. It's going to be called get AABB. And it's going to take in a uint32 for index. So maybe I should call this get AABB for element array. Sure. That's a little bit more descriptive because that's what we're doing. We're not getting AABB for something arbitrary. We're specifying an element array at some index, and we're computing the AABB for it. And in fact, 
we could just make this go ahead and just make this inline method in here. We don't need to do anything special. And we are going to include math slash aabb dot hpp b hpp <laughs> there <laughs> there's lots of repeating letters it's a little confusing that's fine so method itself really easy if you look at math we actually have a constructor for this under aabb it takes in an array of points how many points there are and the stride which we don't actually need to care about so we just need to worry about this so what we're going to do is we're going to say elements sub index and we're going to look at index element 0. We're going to take the address of this, because that gives us a float array. And we're just going to return an AABB. This is going to be the float array. And for the size, that's a little bit trickier, but not too bad. We're going to take elements.size. And we're going to divide by element sizes. Sub index. And there we go, we have an AABB. And with that, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go to game.cpp again. We're going to take, when we're creating our vertex array, I'm also going to create some a couple of AABBs. I'm going to call it AABB vertex array AABB. And this is just going to equal models sub zero. And we're going to use our method, get AABB from element which I called element array, excuse me. Okay, I already forgot what I called it, but that's fine. And it's going to be element array zero. That's going to have our vertices. So tiny cube vertex array AABB will be models one. And you might notice, hey, Benny, isn't this a little bit of an inefficient way to do it? You know, we're accessing the models twice, once for the vertex array and once for the AABB. And yeah, we'll address this a little bit later. But for the purpose of example, this will work just fine. So if I scroll down to where I'm creating everything, we're going to set our collider component AABB starting off to our vertex array AABB. And then down here, we're going to change it because down here, we're, well, we're using the tiny cube vertex array. So we're going to change it to tiny cube vertex array AABB. And with that, we should be able to build and run everything should build and run. Ah, but it doesn't. All right. And the issue was this should be get AABB for element array, not from element array. Not that it matters too much, just nomenclature, but you know, you have to use the correct method names. And there's one more thing I overlooked, and that is in indexed model.hpp where we wrote this. We shouldn't be using elements.size. We should be using elements sub index dot size. That should be the correct way to handle all this. And with that all out of the way, now we should be able to build and run. And now the AABBs should actually be, you know, representative of the object. So if I just put the monkey over it, hey, look, doesn't have to be like a specific point, just anytime the monkey goes over it, it interacts. And also does some white space in the corner of the monkey, because, you know, it's a bounding box, not an actual box, but, you know. So that just about wraps up this video. But now that we know our interaction system works, at least on a basic level, how do we make it do something remotely useful, like, say, implement collision? Find out next time! I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will see you all in the next video. Don't forget, if you want early access to videos, you can become a patron on Patreon and get early access today. And also don't forget, there's an awesome Betty Discord for you all to check out. Special thank you to my patrons for being awesome and making these videos possible. Thank you all very much, 